from the fellowship of these truths, we see the difference between man's word and God's word, as well as between God's work and man's work. It's just so crucial for us to recognize the Lord's voice and for us to welcome his return. All mysteries are revealed by the truth of Almighty God, so that all of us can have true belief and clear understanding. Ah, I feel enlightened, as if I'm stepping into the sun. All thanks be unto Almighty God. Amen. I have one more point to ask. Since Almighty God has expressed the truth in order to judge and in order to purify man, then how do you experience God's judgment and purification? Could you share your testimonies? Would you? Because that's what we're here to seek. We really want to hear how you have experienced Almighty God's work of judgment. Please share with us. Yes, yes. I want to hear too. Then I'll be happy to share. Thanks be to God. I'll talk about my experience after accepting the judgment and chastisement of the words of Almighty God. I believed in the Lord for more than 30 years. I served and I spent for the Lord, which I did quite zealously, in fact. And I also suffered a lot. I went to the Philippines, South Africa, and other countries many times in order to preach the gospel of the Lord. In my view, in today's society full of material desires, a person like me who forsook everything and labored for the Lord would be the one who loves the Lord. Everything I did would gain approval of the Lord. I would absolutely be caught up into the kingdom of heaven and gain the reward when the Lord returns. After accepting Almighty God's work in the last days, and reading his words. I knew that my thinking was wrong. Let me read Almighty God's words to you. You merely wish for the grace of Jesus and merely want to enjoy the blissful realm of heaven. Yet you have never obeyed the words spoken by Jesus and have never received the truth expressed by Jesus when he returns to flesh. Your loyalty is in word only. Your knowledge is merely intellectual and conceptual. Your labors are for the sake of gaining the blessings of heaven. And so, what must your faith be like? Your hearts are filled with desires and wealth. Your minds are filled with material things. Every day, you calculate how to gain from me, assessing how much wealth and how many material things you have gained from me. Every day, you await ever more blessings to come down upon you so that you may enjoy more and greater pleasurable things. What you want is not the truth or life, and not the principles by which to conduct yourself, much less my painstaking work. It is everything your flesh possesses, money, position, family, marriage, and so on. For my word or my work, you simply have no regard. So I sum up your belief in one word, perfunctory. That which you are truly devoted to, you will try to achieve at any price. But I find this is by no means the case with your belief in God. Here your devotion and your earnestness are lesser. So I say, all those who are not utterly sincere have failed at believing in God. Think carefully. Are there not many failures among you? God's words pierced my heart and my spirit, just like a kind of sharp double-edged sword. 
making me realize that my believing in God was only for the receiving of blessings and grace from Him. My spending, sacrificing, and suffering was not out of loving the Lord, but for the blessings of the kingdom of heaven and great rewards in the future. My intentions and various means to barter with God were completely exposed in the light. How ugly and contemptible they were. Back in my years of believing in the Lord, back when I was blessed with remarkable family harmony, with rich materials, and with wonderful peace, I would thank the Lord and I would praise Him quite joyfully then. But when the Lord didn't satisfy me as I prayed to Him when faced with adversity, tribulation, and trials, I would complain to the Lord, misunderstand Him, and stray from Him. I even argued with the Lord, not willing to spend for Him. But when I thought of the blessings of the kingdom of heaven and His rewards, I had the faith to work for the Lord again. Now I realize I didn't truly believe in and love the Lord. Yes, I was just deceiving the Lord as well as making use of the Lord. Just as what God says, man searches for me in the midst of pain, and he looks unto me among trials, during times of peace, he enjoys me. When in peril, he denies me. When he is busy, he forgets me. And when he is idle, he goes through the motions for me. Yet never has anyone loved me throughout their whole life. The disclosure that's within Almighty God's words left me just so both ashamed and humiliated. I saw that while believing in God, I didn't actually treat God as God. I didn't have real obedience and reverence for Him, but was just filled with demands. I was really just quite selfish and base and greedy and evil, which was the total nature of Satan. I was just a base person. I was bent solely on profit as well. How holy is God, also how righteous, with such pleasures of the flesh and such extravagant desires in believing in God. Even if I follow God all my life, I would never receive God's approval, but be forsaken and eliminated by God. After that, I read another passage of words from Almighty God. Please turn to page 342. It is the belief in God so that you may obey God, love God, and perform the duty that should be performed by a creature of God. This is the aim of believing in God. You must achieve a knowledge of the loveliness of God, of how worthy God is of reverence, of how, in His creatures, God does the work of salvation and making them perfect. This is the minimum that you should possess in your belief in God. Belief in God is principally the switch from a life in the flesh to a life of loving God, from a life within nature to a life within the being of God. It is coming out from under the domain of Satan and living under the care and protection of God. It is being able to achieve obedience to God and not obedience to the flesh. It is allowing God to gain your entire heart, allowing God to make you perfect and freeing yourself from the corrupt satanic disposition. The word of Almighty God brought light to my heart and reversed my wrong views towards pursuit. From that point on, 
my belief in God began to take a turn. I lived no longer in pursuit of the grace of God or His rewards, and I had a fear of God and focused on seeking and practicing the truth always. I performed my duty according to the requirements of God, and I placed importance on eating and drinking the Word of God, pursuing to know God in His Word, and to know myself in God's Word, and to accept God's judgment and chastisement. Through experiencing God's judgment and chastisement, I had some knowledge of God's holy and righteous disposition that brooks no offense by man. I came to know my wrong intentions and impurities in believing in God, and my notions and imaginations towards God, and had true hatred towards my satanic nature of resisting and rebelling against God. I began to betray the flesh and Satan. My obedience and reverence toward God increased gradually, and my relationship with God became more and more normal. During the experience, I came to realize that God's judgment and chastisement are really God's true love to man, the greatest salvation to man. I cannot gain such results after many years' belief in the Lord in the Age of Grace. For all these are brought from the judgment of Almighty God in the last days. All of the glory be given unto Almighty God! Amen! This testimony is so practical. From it, I could see that Almighty God's words can change and judge and purify man. Now I am very sure that Almighty God is the return of the Lord Jesus. Almighty God has revealed man's wrong intentions and aim of believing in God through His Word. Except the returned Lord Jesus, who else could express such words with authority and power? The Word of Almighty God is truly God's voice. Clearly, Almighty God is the returned Jesus all thanks be to Almighty God. Amen. Amen. I am so brightened. The Lord Jesus has finally returned. We all meet the Lord Jesus again. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, after all this time I see your appearance. <laughs>